Hello everybody and welcome. I just wanted to do a little interview while we're at the Nanolex training refresher update day. Um, and we've got here Bob Turner. Now Bob, you run a detailing company. I do. So I run Head Turner's Detailing. Um, I'm based down in Hertfordshire. Um, Whereabouts in Hertfordshire? So I've just moved to a new unit at the moment now in a place called Flamstead. Flamstead. Yeah. Interesting. And what I really want to talk to Bob uh, about, because I think it's a really contentious topic and I think it's one well worth talking about, um, you are a part-time professional detailer. I am. So uh, there's a lot of sort of uh, bitterness actually I'd say about this because uh, I regard detailing certainly as, as a spectrum so you've got your kind of your casual amateur who does it now and then and might have a couple of products on the shelf then you've got your die-hard pros who are doing it five six seven days a week um, and they're churning out you know they're at the top of their game sort of thing and then within that spectrum you have everything else so um, we have quite a lot of uh, for example enthusiasts who then go professional um, and that progression is normally on a part-time basis. You know, they've got a job, they'll do a little bit here and there for friends and family, they start realizing that they can make some dollar out of it and it starts becoming more of a thing. Um, and there's this phrase which I kind of half like and half don't like, weekend warrior. I like it because of the alliteration, um, <laughs> but it has semi-negative connotations, doesn't it? It does, and it can imply that a weekend warrior is the amateur on his driveway. Doing it. Exactly. Yeah, quite. Yeah. And I think it's important that a, a, a distinction is made between a part-time professional and a um, amateur who occasionally does it for money, so a semi-pro, if you like. Yes. Because um, a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, a, a part-time detailer can nowhere near be as good as a full-time detailer. And I'd counter that by saying, well, actually, if you've been detailing um, for 20 years on and off and you know your stuff and you've been researching it and you've been a keen enthusiast, there's no reason why you can't be good. And also that someone who's doing it five or six days a week, it, you become a bit of a machine. You know, I've got, I know a lot of people who do that and they're like, we're getting these cars in and to the point where they say the cars don't even matter anymore. As far as I'm concerned, it's paint. I'm just doing paint and that's all I see. And they come with, or, you know, they get back injuries, shoulder injuries, all these sort of things yeah. because it is hard physical work. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm not having a go against full-time detailers at all. I've got utmost respect. But I think a distinction needs to be made uh, between a part-time semi-pro and a part-time pro. And um, people say, well, what about from a customer point of view? What, what do you feel you are weaker at from a customer point of view than a full-time person? Good question. Yeah. Well, the I only don't, I don't I don't I can't answer that. No. Well, the only thing I think is availability. Yeah. Because if you're only doing it two or three days a week, then technically you do have less availability. And um, you know, then a lot of the the full time will say, well, they don't have the overheads that we've got. So um, you know, you're doing it on the cheap. It's just additional income on the side. But actually, um, as a professional, you have insurance. You know, your Nanolex approved. Yep. Your PVD approved. Correct. You've got all of these overheads. Um, which, if anything, are more expensive for you because you've got fewer hours to uh, wear them off, so to speak. So if your insurance, for example, is 500 a year, just for an example, uh, and you're only able to do it, um, say, two days a week, so that's 52 weeks, so that's 110 days. Whereas if you're doing it six days a week, 52 times six is like 312 or something. And so you're wearing it off at, at a much faster rate. So you actually have to generate more per hour for it to make sense. Um, and what I really like when talking to Bob about this was you said you enjoy it. I do. Um, and you said that it was, you talked to me about the work life balance because you're actually quite a high powered IT man, aren't you? Yes, so my background is uh, in, in IT work. So I've been working in IT since I was 19. Um, I've, my background is virtualization, Citrix, Windows servers, um, VMware, stuff like that, where you VMware. can create multiple operating <coughs> systems on a single machine. So as well as being Nanolex approved, I'm VMware approved. <laughs> but. Um, and you have a background in F1 as well? Uh, yes, I, I also worked for Rebel Racing F1 team for a few years where I looked after their IT. Um, and that was a, a sort of job I really enjoyed mm -hmm. um, because of what I got to see and do. Yeah. What, and the exposure you get into an F1 environment and the forefront of IT technology. So if you're an IT geek, you're in your element. Mm. Um, I'm and, very green if you could have <laughs> done pasty, but if I wasn't and, pasty. And if you like cars, yes. you're in your element. And you said you're a car man, aren't you? And I'm a car man. Yeah, You've, he's got a Jaguar XFS, three litre diesel, I have. with a couple of tweaks. Have you told your insurance company about the tweaks? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so no, can totally stop, of but it's running quite low. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you're a so car man, for instance. So I'm a car yeah. man, so yeah, and those that know me know I'm a Jaguar man as well, mm -hmm. having bought my first 23, and that's really where detailing for me 
became something that I wanted to do because I, I bought an auto limb kit off a friend of a friend who worked for Mercedes at the time to start experimenting and trying things out, seeing what I could do to keep my car looking better than everyone else's in the street. And uh, over time, you, you use products, you learn different things, you end up doing cars for other people, and you do develop a, a love for detail, and you then learn to machine polish, and you start doing things that other, everyone else that isn't the detailer is scared to do to their cars. People are scared to take a clay bar to it in case they scratch it. People mm -hmm. are scared to take a machine polish in case they burn through it. To an extent, quite right. To an extent. Yeah. Nowadays, more people do that, but you know, ten, well, well, now I'm 32 now, so nine years ago, ten, mm. you know, eight years it ago, yeah. it, it was a bit different. And I think there were less products available as well, um, and maybe it wasn't quite so. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm showing my young age. But <laughs> maybe said it wasn't quite. A lot of products weren't quite so readily, readily available to people. No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I think some of the big uh, resellers and stuff started in sort of those six up to probably probably 2010. Um, but no, it was, I mean, I remember my, my early days was Halfords, and I'd pop down, I'd get Auto Glim, I'd get Meguiar's. Hell, the first machine polishing I did yeah. was a, <laughs> this is embarrassing, this, but a wool pad on a drill, of all things, on a little 306, <laughs> trying to get rid of orange peel. And um, it, it didn't go so well, but it was my car, so hey. Yeah. Um, but what I like is, so you've got this job, you've also got two kids. I have. And they're a bit of responsibility. Yes, I've got a three-year-old and a uh, nearly 11 month old. So, Crikey, so they're at the hard so work stage. they keep me busy. And you can't set and them to work up chimneys or anything, yeah? No. Although I do want to try and get the old one to come and start doing some detail. Okay. Yeah, yes. so you, you need to learn how the machine polish now. So, it's a necessary life <laughs> skill. Right, son, don't worry about talking and walking. Don't worry about swimming. <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry about school. It's but irrelevant. Let's go and machine polish a car. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, from your point of view, and it, again, I was, we talked obviously behind the scenes, and you're saying how I've got this quite, you know, intense, should we say, job. Um, during the week and what I really like doing is working during the weekend on cars because you enjoy the activity of detail. I do and myself and my wife we've got a good sort of understanding and a good balance of how we do things, um, how we work the detail into what I, what I do because mm -hmm. not only is it a hobby but and a money maker but it's going to help me buy a bigger house for my kids. Yeah. So, and it's also got you out of a certain amount of childcare, got, I imagine. And it so, means no. I don't have to do childcare every weekend. Yes. <laughs> even though I've got to care for someone's car every weekend. So actually, <laughs> you are enjoying what you're doing. Yes. It's not really just for the money. The money's a nice perk, but it's... It's, it's a nice perk, but it's doing something that you enjoy doing. And, and do you charge an equivalent rate? I mean, I know you do because obviously you're a PVD member, so we check this sort of thing. But you charge a fair rate for your work, not because you know you get some people who say, "Oh, I'll only do it for ten because they enjoy doing it and they don't need the money." So actually, they are putting a proper detailer out of work by doing that. You actually charge top rates, you know, just as anyone else. Yeah. Um, well, you know, to show your worth and not to bring yeah. the rest of the industry down by trying to price it up. Well, exactly. To be, you know, I'm PVD approved. So there's a set of standards for that. Also, Nanolex approved. Mm -hmm. There's a set of standards for Nanolex as well. So I can't undercut another non equal uh, Nanolex guy. Yeah. Because that's not how the product market. It's an expensive product. I'm proud to, you know, be part of the associations that I, I am in the, in the short time. Yeah. And so. I think as well as that, whether I do it part time or not, if you want me to do the job properly, yeah. I will do it. Yeah, and I think that's something really important. And I know on the social networks and stuff, things get bedeviled. But I think the fact that there is a distinction between an enthusiast who will take a couple of dollars under the table or a bit, of, you know, a pint of beer now and then yeah. um, to do it, I agree, that can upset the market, particularly if they're actually talented, because if they're doing a really yes. good job and not charging for <laughs> it, it's, it's not great for the rest of us. Um, but also, from a customer point of view, they are still getting quality of service and the knowledge. And it might be, if you're only doing it two days a week, um, you, some might argue that you're not learning as quick as somebody doing it five days a week. But I would again counter that and say that, well, there are a lot of people who are doing it 25 years and it hasn't all been a learning process because they yes. kind of established yeah. their valeting skills or their detailing skills and they haven't developed it. And I've met people who've been going for only four, five, six years and they're really good and they've been yes. sponging information. Yeah. Every time we go to the, one of these training days and stuff, I keep on bumping into the same people because they're updating their skills. And again, the cynics say, oh, you're just collecting certificates. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, then maybe they do have a kind of a wall that needs papering, but on the flip <laughs> side, they're picking up stuff and they're engaging. Yeah. So I think that's really, really key. And it is an industry 
People moan about how easily accessible it is. You know, you just buy a bucket and then suddenly you're a professional detailer. It's not true, but people have that kind of impression of it. And by the same token, uh, in terms of building up those skills, you know, there is a, a, a significant process to it, but it is possible. You don't have to be 150 years old before you can declare yourself no. to be a proper. No, I don't think so. I think the moment that you are a insured, approved person, Mm -hmm. detailing cars, you can call yourself a professional, whether you do it four days a week, one day a week, five days a week, 28 days a week, mm -hmm. or 28 days of the week. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the point, is But that's the point, isn't it, yeah. I think, and um, I think as well, um, for me as well, it's, uh, it's being able to do something that you enjoy to a high standard, that the person that is going to get their car back is over the moon with, and knowing that, yeah, I managed to fit it into that, those two and a half days at the end of the weekend, but it got the job done. Yeah, and at the end of the day, the customer is getting the service. They're not, exactly. It's not upsetting the industry. It's just no. really, it's just some people within it, I suppose, find something to clamour on and moan about. I think it could just be that, yeah. yeah, I did one car that week where you might have done, sometimes might have done four. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Um, it's touched on the subject you said about you know, learning and experience. That some people can do this 25 years and they're stuck in a routine of doing what they've always known. Mm -hmm. Some people have been at 25 years and have learned so many different things. And I've learned loads from, you know, I've, I've worked with some people um, up and down the country in my short, short detailing career, if you like. Journey, journey, they journey, like to call it a journey. journey, they call it a journey. And I've learned different tips from different people about how to get a result. Even today, doing this golf behind us, yeah, I learned a new trick, basically, about yeah. how to get the same effect, but you know, do a little bit quicker, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a good thing. Yeah, and again, that's a professional it's sort of thing. It's new things that I've learned as well. It's doing things yeah. Yeah. within a schedule, because if yeah. a customer gives you a budget, which gives you a time scale, um, you need to be able to achieve as best as you possibly can within that budget slash time scale. So again, another sign of being professional yeah. is being disciplined and saying, right, I've got this car in, I've got nine hours in the car, I've got this, this, this and this to do. And I think there are quite a lot, particularly with the hobbyists, I mean, speaking with myself, because I am just an enthusiast, um, if I've got a day on my car, a lot of it will be making coffee, uh, choosing music, uh, wandering around, and crying when I see rust holes in the car. That's basically what I do. And then now and then, maybe a microfiber gets sort of thrown about the place. Um, and I think that's a real distinction. If you see professionals at work, when they're not being watched or filmed or anything like that, if you're just sort of loitering in a dark corner or the cupboard with a crack half open, something like that, use trap shadow, that's an important thing snipers use it. Um, then you'll see that they're working in a very disciplined, regimented way, and they just get on with it. And that, I think, is a real sign of professionalism as well. Yeah. Um, yeah rather than I... procrastinating. <laughs> so I like the long words. But also what's really interesting is, is Bob, because in terms of the IT environment that you're in, I've, my background's IT, so when you say a VMware, I know what you mean, because I used to play around with yes. that sort of thing too. Um, that's quite high powered stuff, and you're creating custom virtual environments for your clients. Yes, that's right. And that sort of thing, you know, you know when you kind of, you know, um, kind of you understand when you know enough about something to realize that you know nothing at all, if you see what I mean. And I understand enough about VMware yeah. to realize that that's high power stuff. So you're going from that, and that must be a very different world and different environment, yeah. um, from coming back and having the peace and quiet of your own detailing bay, your own kind of controlled zone to be able to do things and your own process. And actually, I would argue that IT, and there are a lot of people from IT in detail, and quite big names as well, yeah. um, is you've got a very regimented mind. You know, you were saying how you love playing with Lego. I think Lego aquariums, IT, uh, to an extent gaming, as in car ga computer gaming, yeah. um, all seem to be a common feature of detailers. Um, and I think it just is, is a side effect of how your brains are wired, if you see yes. what I mean. And I think with all of them as well, you're continually learning. Mm -hmm. You know, how everything, new technology comes out, new polishes come out, new products come out, new methods come out, different Lego books come out. Mm. You learn how to put it all together, you learn how it all works. Yeah, no, absolutely. And also, some you can swallow, some don't swallow. Uh, I've loved yeah, it. Yeah, I have a lot of ones you can easily swallow. Easy swallow. Um, <laughs> and, and the other thing is, we, we mentioned journey earlier, actually. I think that's an important point is that quite often, if you're in a job, whatever it may be, one that perhaps you're not enjoying very much, and it's interesting, you're saying you want to be out of IT by the time you're 40, or can we say yes. that? I don't know if your boss is watching. It's fine. He knows that. He's my, <laughs> my boss is my mate. <laughs> All right. um, but my point being is that people who want to become professional detailers, you don't have to drop everything straight away, become a professional detailer and yeah. put everything at risk. 
you've got yourself a plan between 30 and 40, you're 32 now, yeah, yeah. to ultimately not have to work in IT. And is that to be a full-time detailer or is that Yeah, that would be the plan. It would be uh, to retire, would be very nice. Yeah. Probably need to make some money first. Yes, tends to help. Bit of a problem there. So, uh, you know, I, when I was 30, I set myself a, a, a sort of goal that, you know, so I've 10 years of, of, of setting up head tellers detailing, trying to make something of it, trying to be the best I can at what I do, uh, and hopefully by the time I'm 40, we'll see where we are. And hopefully, I, it's something I could do full time. I would. I've got other aspirations in life. You know, I want to buy a bigger house for family. I want to. Uh, I want to build a, build a business and a reputation. Some would argue you can't build it if you're only part time, but no, I think you. I, I think that's wrong. I'm doing it. Yeah. So it pretty. just takes time, but I'm happy for it to take time because I've got the skill of an IT job. And, you know, you continue learning IT, you continue learning detail, and you, you're not going to get left behind. Yeah, and it keeps your brain fizzing as well. And I think this is important. A lot of people have got families to support. Um, I just have Subarus to support at the moment, and, and, and they're <laughs> quite expensive, but not too bad. Um, but it is, it's, that, it's that thing of doing things organically. And the other thing is, if you uh, suddenly, if you hadn't done any detailing at all, dropped everything, got a ton of money in a bank loan or family kick the bucket or something like that and um, said right I'm now a full-time detailer and suddenly people say oh he's a full-time detailer so he must be better than this part-time detailer well actually it doesn't work I'm the same bloke. you know you're, organi <laughs> you're organizing it yeah. to, to, to develop so I think um, I think we should have a bit more recognition of the distinction between full-time detailer part-time detailer and weekend warrior and again I'm not saying that in a derogatory way because you know weekend warriors I help I'm kind of technically in that category yeah. if I have more weekends but you, you see the weekend warriors on the car form I do, I do a lot I'm on a lot of car forms you see that like, a, a guy would say he's been to Halfords and he's bought some products and yes. he's detailed his car you spent four hours on it yeah and then you made then your wife called you in for tea <laughs> <laughs> it's like that sketch isn't that I look down at you and you look down and it all goes down that chain and we shouldn't be looking yeah. down at anybody we should just have mutual respect for what everybody <laughs> does full time part time amateur but you know you do, if, it doesn't matter if you're a weekend warrior, if you're a part-time detail, if you're doing what you love. Yeah, exactly. Do what you got to do. And actually what I do is, I mean, I, 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 we have victims of, we are victims of, of haters and sort of, sort of narrow-minded, nasty little people <laughs> quite often. And, um, you know, the trick is you just ignore them and carry on and do what makes you happy and what makes sense for you that. and your family. I'm yeah. good at that. Being a married man, I'm good at ignoring. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> for personal safety reasons. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think that was a, a, a good thing to bring up. And I think it is relevant because I do, I mean, I, I, my role within PVD is to uh, essentially stand up for the professional balloter, the professional detailer. And that accounts for all levels of proper professional. Um, from the guys who are still reasonably new, reasonably fresh, and you've got to accept that they don't necessarily have the skills and experience to do things, right the way up to the guys who are at the very top of their game. Um, and my job is to basically kind of, not, I'm not going to say look after, but try and you know make sure that they've got the, the respect that they need. But then equally, from the reader point of view, you know we spend a lot of time with our uh, enthusiast readers for the magazine, and they're asking lots of questions. I love answering them because it's being able to help and be able to sort of share the love, and also you know bring people up. There are a lot of people who want to be professionals yeah. and helping them come up. And we're regularly we get so many applications from people who are just starting out. Who well, can I join? And I'm like, not yet. But look, stay in touch, send us messages, ask us questions, we're here to help. Uh, and that's very much what we spend a lot of our time doing. And it's great because now we've been going for, what, since 2012, um, some of those early guys now, they're, they're in it for like six, seven years and you're seeing them really kind of, I'm not gonna say bloom like a flower <laughs> because it's, it, it loses the masculinity of it, but it is that sort of thing and it's helping, which is cool. So anyway, I digress, but I think it's great to see head uh, detailing grow up and um, see it develop, and I'm looking forward to it. So it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.